Good morning, Stocktonians, and welcome to another exciting episode of Tales and Tips. Before we start our wonderful show talking about Lost and Found Pets 209, we're going to have an announcement from our local Stockton host, Lions Club, about a wonderful upcoming event that you should all go to to support our community. Hi, my name is Roy Morales, and I'm the past president of Stockton Oaks Lions Club, and we are pleased to uh, participate in this weekend's uh, in this weekend's um, event um, and uh, the pub crawl on the mile. Um, and we we had one back on February 25th. It was very successful, um, and we're really looking forward to having a, a, a huge event this weekend. And we, we encourage everyone to come out. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna give you some additional information. I'm gonna have Lisa Worlow give you some additional information as far as how you can pr purchase tickets. But Stockton Host Lions Club is involved, and there are several charities involved as well. And that is this weekend. So I think with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Lisa. Uh, just to give us maybe a little bit more information on this week's event. Hi. Well, we're going to have another pub crawl on the Miracle Mile, and we have nine businesses that are involved. The tickets are $10, and you'll get a discount at uh, La Palma, the Ave, the Abbey, Tie Me Up, Sangua, Whirlows, Taps, Whiskey Barrel. And um, you can also enter to win a $25 gift card for one of these places. 100% of your $10 ticket goes for Pixie Woods or Music in the Park. The Lions Club is so gracious at always giving 100%. So please come out and support them and our community and these wonderful businesses on the Miracle Mile. There will also be live music at several of the businesses, and I think the Whiskey Barrel is having a tricycle race. So lots of fun events. Uh, please be a part of it. We look forward to seeing you. And Lisa, can you add the day and the time of the event? Details, yeah. Uh, it's this Saturday, and it starts at 1 p.m., and it goes till 9 p.m. And uh, so you can come have lunch, have a few drinks, and go home, take a nap, and come back for dinner. Excellent. Okay. Ron, did you want to add anything about our Lions Club and the pub crawl and how much fun it is? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Ron Cutler, and I am a past, past president of the Lions Club. And uh, I'll tell you what, this event is just a kick in the butt. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, people come out, you know, they walk around wine strolling and sipping some beers and, and just having a wonderful, wonderful time uh, mingling with each other. Uh, last event we that we did it was just so much fun so come on out enjoy yourselves Stockton Host Lions Club is beginning and starting to celebrate their uh, this is our 98th year here in Stockton so wow. come on out enjoy it uh, support the Lions Club and the local charities that we uh, that we support such as Pixie Woods uh, come on out enjoy and part of it also supports the radio station as well. The radio station is selling tickets. Whirlows is selling tickets. Lions Club members are selling tickets. So come out to this wonderful event on the mile it's this Saturday from 1 to 9 and have some fun with the Lions. Any last comments from Ron or Roy? Can we get a roar? <laughs> come on, Roy. Let's do a roar right here together. Lions, Lions roar. roar. Lions, Lions roar. roar. See you at the Miracle Mile this weekend. All right, thanks so much for that great announcement. All right, so today we are going to switch things back to talking about animal topics. And I have with me Linda Dashnow and Dara Campos of Lost and Found Pets 209, an amazing organization that's been in our community the past couple of years. We're going to find out about the history, what it does, and how they're helping our community. So I'm going to start with Linda. Can you please tell us about how Lost and Found Pets was formed? Well, it started on, really, uh, July 5th, the day after the worst day in any city uh, of having lost animals. Because of all the fireworks that are happened that evening, um, they're scared. And if they have a chance to get out, they're on the streets. So that morning, I found a dog, and I thought the only possibility was to take it to the animal shelter. However, I did find several rescue groups that said we can hold them and then continue to look for the owner. 
So I learned the rules on what the engagement is of how long to hold a, a dog for, uh, what you do, what you post, where to post. And they gave me the idea of going on Lost and uh, going on Facebook and creating a site. I have to thank uh, Stephanie Phillips because she was on Facebook and her and I just constantly had the same tips and the same um, enthusiasm. So we met and we then changed what was put in the newspaper, how to find a dog uh, or a cat, and uh, developed a relationship. And from that relationship, opened up a Facebook page. Awesome. And I know Stephanie especially, and all of you, are very active on Facebook. But I've seen her post several times, rules and tips. And later in the show, I would like you to go over some of those rules and helpful advice that you can give to people. What year was this that, that this was founded? July 5th, 19... <laughs> or 2000, and it was just... a. Uh, Two years ago. Two years ago. Okay, awesome. The 14th. Awesome. 2014. And so you guys basically co-founded this organization together, seeing that there was a need. And I believe you shared with me at one time that you also had a pet that was lost and experienced issues with that, and that was part of the motivation. And it's amazing how one or two people can make a huge difference. That's right. You take responsibility whether it's your pet or someone else's, someone is missing that pet. And so uh, you, you do whatever you can do, and there are a lot of resources available that a lot of people are not aware of. But uh, we try to impart those uh, words of wisdom and, and things to do on our website. All right. And Dara, how did you become involved? Um, I became involved because I actually lost a cat, which to this day she's still missing. Oh. Um, and I posted her. And I became very active on helping members through my 20 years of rescue experience. Um, Stephanie and Linda both reached out to me and asked me to be a co-admin on the page. Um, so that started my journey. And when Linda started her 501, um, I was asked to be on the board, on the board helping with the 501. So. And when you talk about the page, you're talking about the Facebook page, but you guys also have a website. Um, let's go back to the Facebook page a little bit. You were sharing with me about numbers of posts and new members every day. Do you want to talk about how many members you have and how many people join? Well, as of approximately an hour ago, we had 35,181 members. Wow. It seemed to be growing at about 100 uh, per day. Wow. Um, th this has been phenomenal uh, because people want to be a part of something that's making a difference. Definitely. And, and we see that because even though they've not lost a, a pet, they maybe uh, see a way that they can help or they're in that area. Can I put up posters? Can I look for them? And uh, what is the dog's name or what is the cat's name? So people that are posting on your site are not just people that have lost animals or found animals. They're also people that want to help in the community to assist those that have lost or found animals. That's awesome. That's right. excellent to hear that. And it sounds like it's a big community. So let's talk about the area that you serve. Is this just in Stockton? Is it beyond Stockton? Right. So we are Lost and Found Pets 209. Hence the 209. So we do try to stay within the 209 area code, which is vast. It covers from Galt all the way down to Fresno and areas in between. Um, we try to stay within that area because it makes it very difficult if we accept members from out of state, out of country, which people have tried to come on from those other places. We want to be very specific so that our members can be active. Mm -hmm. um, we often, there's other smaller groups, um, for example, they have one in Modesto that we actually work with those other admins on those pages and we tag those other admins if it's in their area. It stays on our page and stays active because we have members in that area, but we also let those smaller pages know we're all about networking and working with the other agencies and pages and organizations. And wouldn't it be magnificent if we could link to different groups up and down all through California so that if someone lost or found a pet somewhere else they would have somewhere to get guidance and help and hopefully 
find their animal or find the home that an animal belongs to. And that would be amazing. And it's not of, of us as admins or even members helping people who are in Sacramento County. One of our admins, Stephanie Phillips, actually helped somebody that was out of the country with the tips wow. and to find their pet. The tips That's actually awesome. Helped. So we don't just close our door if you're not in 209. We will awesome. help you. But we also reach out and tell you where maybe your local pages are. Well, and the tips are universal, mm -hmm. so they would be applicable no matter where you live. Um, earlier, you had shared with me, Linda, that there it's not just the Lost and Found Pets 209, that there's other branches to your organization, about five different groups working together. Did you want to talk about the other groups also? Well, out of one thing that becomes successful, uh, other things uh, are necessary. They blossom. Uh, <laughs> that they do. Um, many times people have questions and so we uh, developed a site called Pets 101 and Rescue. This is a dog that may be, or a cat, that needs rescuing. We have saw it uh, in, a, in a place that needs to be uh, behind a fence and, and it's stuck and it needs to have a rescue. Or possibly, um, gee, what do I do? Look at this and they post a picture of uh, something that's growing on, on their dog. You know, what do I do about this? Well, we, we give them guidance based on the, seeing a veterinarian, making sure that they go to a veterinarian first, and that also, have you tried this, have you tried that, and giving them an, a forum to talk about. So that's Pets 101 and Rescue. Um, then sometimes you, you find a dog, you work with the dog, you cannot find the owner. It's got, a month has gone by, uh, two months have gone by, and so you're looking for a new home. We developed a, a site called Central Paws Adoption Site. Oh, awesome. So this way you can go on there and look for dogs that are, or cats that are looking for homes. And we just try to help the shelter so they're not overburdened by doing that. Which is awesome because our shelter needs help. We've made so many strides at the shelter, but there's still so many animals. Um, I believe this weekend they had another free adoption weekend because of how overcrowded the shelter is. And then, of course, the, the next site that we opened was the Felines 209 because uh, you have people that just have a tremendous amount of uh, uh, cat love and they mm -hmm. keep the, uh, the kitty cats are coming and there's a kitty season. So we try to separate it a little bit so that you really stay focused on these are the animals. Awesome. And it just helps people more. I, I had no idea. I knew about the cats to the felines to a nine, but I didn't know about those other two branches, and that's excellent. So you're doing a tremendous amount of help in our community. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Well, it takes a, it takes a whole village, and we're very fortunate that we have a wonderful village that are not only members but our admins are people who come up with ideas and uh, again trying to make it the best, so that it's a good experience for all. And then are there two more? branches or that's well we have um, uh, the lost and found we also have the Lodi animal we take care of the Lodi animals um, website awesome. that they have and then uh, felines and the central paws and then awesome. lost and found and pets 101 that's amazing that's awesome and I know we've touched a little bit about dogs and cats but what other type of animals have you helped so we primarily, of course, help dogs and cats because those are the normal domesticated pets. However, on our page, we don't discriminate. If you <laughs> have a lost lizard um, and you want to post, by all means, post. We've helped reunite uh, llamas, apacas, horses, wow. pigs, uh, birds. Um, you know, besides the two, we actually had a ferret on there, too. Wow. So, you know, we don't discriminate. If it's a pet, it's a pet, and it can go on to our page. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then besides the lost and found part of this, you also microchip. So let's talk about the microchip events, how many of you had, how many animals you've microchipped, future events, and how much it is to purchase a microchip through you. 
Okay, so to date we've done approximately 12 microchip events. Um, when we started off, we did have a fee of uh, $5, which just pays for the actual cost of the microchip. This last year, uh, we did raise it up to $8 because we really wanted to focus on low cost spay and neutering um, and help financially assist members that couldn't afford even low cost. Um, However, recently um, we were blessed with some donations, some great donations. So our events this year um, for the last four months have been free microchip. Wow. We see a desperate need. Uh, we want to help the shelters more, um, not only Stockton, but Lodi, Manteca, all the shelters. And if a dog has a microchip, they're more than likely going to get home. Not only do we do our microchipping events, but we actually register every single microchip that's inserted into the dog. We don't leave that up to the owner. They're given, of course, their, their username and password, but we make sure that within a week to two of the microchip events that all microchips are registered um, so that they're just not dead. We also keep hard records, so in case we need to get information, we have that. That's awesome. That's huge. Because I know that a lot of people will go and get microchips through other rescues or shelters, and it's left up to them to register that information. And because of that, that doesn't always happen. So that when a pet is lost, and we might find it at all creatures, there's nothing tagged on that chip. And unfortunately, they may as well not have a chip in that situation, because it's not working for them. It's not working in their favor because the information isn't linked to it. Right. Correct. And um, we have two microchip events that are in the works for the rest of the year. We don't have anything specific yet. If you join our Facebook group, Lost and Found Pets 209, keep a lookout because we will announce them about two to three weeks before the events. We do have our annual fundraiser dinner coming up which helps financially support purchase of the microchip and also spay and neuter and other things that our organization organization does that event is august 26 uh, excuse me august 26 from uh five to nine and it is where is at it at the lutheran church in lodi at 105 South Ham Lane. You're able to purchase tickets um, by messaging one of the admins on our page or going to our website, which is www.lostandfoundpets209.com and you can click our PayPal link and put in the notes that it's for a ticket. If you put your address, we will send that ticket out. If you put will call, we'll write your name on a ticket. There's only 200 tickets available, so get them early. How much are the tickets? The tickets are $30 and it pays for um, a full basic three course meal. We have salad, chicken, uh, dessert, tri-tip, um, and that's what the $30 pays for. We have beautiful raffle baskets. And of course, we'll also be present so you can get to meet us awesome. and our admins too. And is there a silent auction as well? There's mainly raffle. Um, I'm not 100% sure we haven't put those logistics. I know we're gonna have a lot of raffle baskets. I'm awesome. not 100% sure about the silent auction right now. Uh, we're still putting that in the works, but it nothing's off the table. <laughs> Excellent. And besides that event and maybe a small amount from the microchip, how do you raise funds for your organization? Where do the funds come from? Generous people who say, how can I help? Awesome. You've made a difference in the community. You've made a difference in helping find my dog or, or getting information to me on what to do. And um, they, they have reached out to us. So donations. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So how can people in the community reach you? First of all, they can go on the uh, website or they can also go on the Facebook page, which is Lost and Found Pets 209. Um, they can send a private message to any of the admins and uh, contact us and we can uh, assist them accordingly. Okay. And do you have PayPal on your website? Yes. 
Okay. And let's say that they don't want to do PayPal or they want to just mail you a check. Where would they mail that to? Uh, my address is 260 Dunsmere Drive in Lodi, California. And they'd make that attention to you. Can you spell your name for people? Sure. That it's D-A-S-H-N-O-W. And that right. would be in Lodi at 95240. Awesome. Awesome. And so besides monetary donations, what can, how can the public help? Well, I bet several people give us uh, cat trees that were brand new that they built, uh, dog houses, uh, uh, travel containers for dogs when we have found them out uh, and we've gone out looking. We, we need to put them in something and not just have them roaming free in the car after we've, <laughs> they've escaped. So uh, all of those things are utilized. Okay. And what about volunteers? Is there a need for volunteers? Well, we have several different things that we do. Yes, we primarily focus on reuniting pets. However, we are basically a community-based organization, so we help members with dog food. Um, we always like volunteers to come out at our microchip events. Um, the biggest thing is to be a support to members, especially when they lost a pet, because they're frantic. That's mm -hmm. a family member. It's not just a pet. It's a family member, and it would be kind of like you know, I don't want to equate it to having a child, but it's kind of like the same feelings. It's what I, that's I, our I family to people. Some you people know? don't have children. Mm -hmm. Some for some people, pets are their only family. Exactly. And so, as far as volunteering, the main thing is being a great support. One on our Facebook page, but you're more than welcome to come out and volunteer at any of our events. We'll put you to work. Um, and I've been in a few of those <laughs> events. <laughs> we put you to work, don't we? Yes. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, you know, we, we take donations of dog food, gently used dog and cat items, um, because we share them. We share them with the Stockton Animal Shelter. We share them with Manteca Animal Shelter. You know, we don't keep anything. Everything that comes into our organization is 100% put out into the community. Awesome. And that's pretty rare that that happens. That's awesome. So 100% of whatever you contribute to Lost and Found Pets 209 is utilized directly for the animals. That's amazing. And what about if someone finds a pet and it's 3 a.m. or loses a pet and it's 3 a.m.? Are, are there people around to assist at that time? Is this 24 hours a day? I would say no. They can post on the site. There are some people who are awake, but we do not have a regular schedule uh, for the late hours. Um, can you see somebody post at 11 o'clock and an admin is saying, we'll do this and this and this? Yes. Can you see the same thing at 5 o'clock in the morning? You might be able to, but um, it, it's all volunteer. Okay. So. And some of the tips that we're going to talk about, are those also posted on your website so that if an admin isn't available, they can go to your website and see those at any time of day? I believe they're also on the description. They are actually posted um, in one of our areas of files. Um, however, the m mostly the members will come on and say and give the tips. It doesn't just have to be an admin. Um, it wouldn't be surprising that an, a member is awake at 3 o'clock because we have members that work and who are just up at those hours and put the tips. Um, we don't have a specific area, but it is under files. But Rest assured, somebody will come on and help you as soon as they're available. The first thing, if you find a lost pet, there is 24-hour emergency veterinarian that can scan it for a chip. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you need to do. All Creatures is always willing to do that. Yes, and you go and you ring their buzzer at 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been mm -hmm. there. And say, hey, I just found this dog. Can I see if it's if it's microchipped? Um, and there, it's a free service at any vet. And if it is microchipped, that will help you hopefully get the pet home if it's registered. All right, excellent. Um, let's go back and talk about some of the tips. So let's say that you it's Saturday night and you find a dog. So we've already talked about scanning for a microchip. What are other things that someone can do? What if they can't catch the dog and such? 
So lost and found pets 209 is very specific. We're very specific on what can be posted on there because it needs to stay very streamlined because it's very limited as far as space goes. Um, if the dog is unsecure, so somebody's not able to catch it, we ask for that pet to be put actually on Pets 101 and Rescue because members on there, they're willing to go out and rescue. Um, but if you're Wonderful. able to secure the pet, what you first need to do is make a post with a clear picture. Now I know some breeds are very expensive and people don't want to put up like a specific face, pay, a face picture of the pet. You can put up a body picture, you can cover half the dog's face, but we need a post where the dog was found, what city, and a picture because it's very helpful to other members who may have said, hey, that's Frankie's dog, who is their neighbor. Um, and from there, then you are given tips. But some of the tips are, one, to get it check for a microchip. The other thing is, if you found a pet, if your neighborhood's safe, if it's a reasonable time, take the dog for a walk around the neighborhood. Look for open fences. Let the dog lead you to where its possible home is. If that you need to put black, you don't need to put a picture on them and put your phone number. Post them within, a, you know, a couple blocks from where you're at. Um, now, if you've lost a dog, it's, it's a little bit different because what you need to do is, one, put their bedding outside because we've had so many members who have woke up in the morning to their pet mm -hmm. laying in their bed outside. I love that suggestion, yes. Yeah. Cats, same thing. Put mm -hmm. their cat post outside. I know if I lost one of my cats and they're familiar with their cat post, I'd come out and they'd be sitting on the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, put, a, put up signs as soon as possible. Do lost my doggy flyers because that does, it's a website called lostmydoggy.com or lostmykitty.com and that notifies a lot of people um, that notifies Stockton Animal Shelter that notifies a lot of our groomers that notifies a lot of our vets mm -hmm. who actually have books and even if the pet's not microchipped and a person brings the animal in and says hey I just found this if they've looked at their lost my doggy and that that pet or is on there they can say hey here's the phone number um, and la don't give up hope the other thing is go to your shelters yes keep in mind in San Joaquin County Stockton Animal Shelter is not only for Stockton. It is for the outlying San Joaquin in, in, in incorporated areas. So just because your dog's lost in, in Lodi, if you have sheriffs that respond to your house and that dog's found there, that means that your dog will go to the Stockton Animal Shelter. Don't give up hope. You know, keep, keep going, keep putting up signs, keep your post active on our page. Um, and you know we've had animals that have been found after months if they're microchipped we've actually had animals found after years i've heard of stories with animals yes. and i'm sure you have being found years later in different states as different well. cities we just had one that was missing from um locally and it was found in merced wow wow it's amazing and and to me one of the most important things that you can do is microchip your pet, which makes it so awesome that you provide that service. And a lot of pet owners, it's surprising, are really resistant to do that. They really believe that there's no chance that their pet will get out. And it always can happen. You might have a fire, you might have a burglary, there might be a storm, your fence might go down, and your pet is suddenly out in the open and anything can happen. And for such a small fee of $8, it's basically an insurance policy. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to find your pet, but it really incre increases the chances. Um, other things that pen pet owners can do, there is a company called TAG, which sells collars and has a GPS system where you can actually track your pet. And I've had several clients purchase that because they have frequent flyers or dogs that will escape often and it's just another tool to try and increase the chance that you're going to get your companion back and we've actually had members who have been willing to go help an owner do a search 
um, oh, especially awesome. in like the vineyards and stuff, um, mm-hmm. to try to locate that mm-hmm. pet. Um, primarily, of course, dogs, because cats are a little different creature, but primarily dogs. Um, but we we oftentimes will do a, like a search. Tell us the story. I'm glad you brought that up because it reminded me of something awesome that I heard with your organization of the truck driver that stopped in Lodi and the dog went in the vineyard. Talk about that. Well, he stopped in uh, Highway 12 and uh, at the large uh, truck stop, and he had a friend in the cab, and when he opened up the door, the dog jumped out and then immediately went in the vineyards. Well, he called and he called, and he could not get his dog to come to him for three days. He wow. stayed there calling for wow. his dog. He was heart sick because he's from Florida, and so he had to get back on the road. He, mm-hmm. he was a long-haul driver. So um, we, we took over for, from there. We met him, and uh, we understood the situation and what the name of the dog was. And so we went out looking for this dog in several different vineyards, and wow. we get little sightings. We even used his So drone. he didn't stay in that same vineyard? He, he no, vineyard there were hops. three vineyards around it, and he just wow. kept going around. He was blind in one eye. Wow. And he crossed Highway 12 at least twice a day for three weeks. Wow. And you used a drone we, also? We also tried for the first time using a drone. We're uh, trying to see where in the vineyards maybe we could see the dog. But um, that did not work out, but it gave us an idea of um, maybe wow. we can utilize this in the future. And how we, you must have been leaving food and water. I mean, Every was, day. We, wow. we, had other, we had a lot of people. It was a 24-hour mission. It wasn't just 8 to 5. Yeah. We had... Um, we. Uh, asked some of the um, people who live in the area um, to keep an eye out for the dog, to put food and water out. We would go check. There was a lot of people involved in Lulu's search. Lulu. Lulu is mm-hmm. her name. Um, and, you know, at any time we kept a post active, we kept, uh, people would post on there, we just saw her. So we would kind of know where she was going. Um, she was in fight or flight mode. She, mm-hmm. was, she was scared. scared. The Highway 12 and Highway 5 mm-hmm. is extremely busy. Um, it's it's scary. There's coyotes out there. There's all mm-hmm. kinds of things out mm-hmm. there that you're not familiar with, especially being that she was used to Florida and she was used to being in Dad's truck. And how was she eventually caught and how did she get back to Florida? Oh, it's called companionship. She missed being around other dogs and other people. And, and, and honestly, I think her spirit said, okay, I'm going to give it a try because we had another truck driver said, what are you doing out here? And we explained that we're trying to catch a dog, and it's in this vineyard right here. And he had backed his truck up. Uh, like all the other trucks but he had a little dog oh so he says we want me to try and so he got down on his knees and he was just calling the name calling the name and and then Lulu peeked around the corner and there was his dog he didn't let go of his dog but he got the dog close enough that we were able to um uh, get him to follow him into a truck Uh a small pickup truck they opened one door he went in with his little dog and went out the other way. Lulu jumped in. They closed the doors. Awesome. And, and that's the way it was. Wow. How cool. And she actually got home. We were able to raise enough funds to fly Lulu home yeah. to her dad. Wonderful. And we get updates. They were actually just here last month. And yeah. we were able to see um, Lulu still traveling in the truck with dad. She is completely microchipped. She awesome. and She has everything. She has tags on her. And and her dad is forever grateful and her family is forever grateful she had a little boy waiting at home for her that's that's so heartwarming that's so amazing it's three weeks that's just also to me very eye-opening because you think about especially for a dog that comes from a family with a little kid and she was that panicked that she was afraid to come Mm -hmm. to people and i love the idea that you guys used another dog to help her to come back. And I'm sure that her dad now keeps her te- uh, harnessed or somehow attached to the car so that yes. she can't do that again. But that's so amazing. Not only were you able to get her back and do round the clock surveillance, but to fly her home. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. That's through the generosity of the memberships 
I mean, we That's all awesome. love our fur babies. That's so. awesome. Well, and I know you've helped in other amazing stories that have been on the news. Um, I know we've, we've talked before um, about the dog who, when the people were out of town, um, ended up getting rehomed. Do you want to talk about that as well? That would be Tipsy. Uh, Tipsy's owners um, were on a trip of a lifetime for them. Um, they were celebrating their, their love. And during that time, one of their dogs had gotten out. Um, and she was actually picked up, unfortunately, by the animal shelter. Um, the owners were out of the country. And so they had limited means to try to help find their pet. Um, during that time, she was actually um, a rescue came and pulled her from the shelter. And when the owners got back home, they went to the shelter and um, they basically at that time, I, don't, I never bashed a shelter, I love our shelter, so, but basically they were kind of, we have a very short window. We have 72 hours, not business hours, 72 hours from when your animal enters the animal shelter. That's three days. Um, and that, and that time can be days that they're closed. Yes, ma'am. And um, Tipsy went to a rescue and was actually adopted out. Um, and the owners had difficulties trying to locate where she was adopted out. Um, utilized several of our pages, including Lost and Found Pets, to locate where she was adopted out. And eventually did get Tipsy back home. So Tipsy's living with mom and dad and her three other um, siblings <laughs> happily and we actually went out and microchipped her immediately which is awesome and you microchipped the others too yes you? we microchipped which is awesome. everybody <laughs> it's awesome that's awesome Linda do you have a favorite rescue story I know we've already touched on two of them <clears throat> I think Lulu just because it, it involves so many different aspects of how to help this dog that had one eye that was crossing Highway 12, um, watching the pattern of where it slept uh, on one side of the road and, and then go into the vineyards where it was cooler, uh, putting out food. We put rotisserie chicken in the cage <laughs> trying to help hmm. uh, entice, but the point hmm. was the dog was scared. And I think we, we learned a lot from this particular rescue and uh, realizing that the dogs are, are social. So they, they want to be around other people if we can just give them a chance to, to uh, get close to us. Um, they, they will come around just like it did with the little dog. Um, Mr. Waddle uh, was the gentleman's name, the other truck driver, and he says, let me see what I can mm -hmm. do with my Maggie. And it was That's just awesome. a little dog. Maggie yeah. and Lulu. Yeah. All right. And Dara, do you have a favorite rescue story? Um, I actually think pretty much any reuni reuni uh, reunification <laughs> or reunited story I, I love um, because it's making a family whole again. It's helping somebody with their pet. And, you know, so any of them, you know, makes me happy. <laughs> And it's amazing. I mean, you, your organization truly provides a huge service to our community, and you've stepped in and you're filling a void that our shelter just isn't able to do. They're overwhelmed with what they have during the day with the animals that are there, and so it's a huge, very much needed service. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about spay and neuter. Linda, you mentioned earlier to me that that's an, also a second passion and an area that you really want to help improve things in our community? Whenever we have an event, uh, it is to, um, you know, ac accomplish being able to spay and neuter and help people out uh, financially in that. Uh, on our website, uh, we have people sign up and we then fund a lot of that portion. It could be a part of it, 50%, it could be 75%, it could be free. We do different things uh, depending on the person's situation, but also what our um, program is for that particular month. 
And is it breed specific? Is it just dogs? Is it dogs and cats? It's every dogs and cats. Yeah. Wonderful. We actually have reached out to some of our local veterinarians and, who have graciously um, worked with us to uh, facilitate low-cost spay and neutering. Um, and what members need to do is, one, they have to be members of our page, Lost and Found Pets 209, and then they can email um, LFPETS209 at Yahoo specific things about their pet and be put on a list to utilize the low-cost spay and neutering. And Wonderful. the highest is $110 for a spay for a female. So that is like a good 40 to 50 percent discount and it's at a local vet um, and they're wonderful and that includes a free microchip if your dog's not microchipped. Excellent and how many animals have you assisted with spay and neuter? I've got 552 yep. is what we've done so far in this program. Wonderful and so anyone that needs financial assistance with spay and neuter can email can you give the email address again? So we have a sign up for our rates. So our, our rates are very specific. Now, if you need financial assistance on spay and neutering, you're more than welcome to email us and we can discuss that. If we have the funds, we are able to do that, but it's on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. everybody. Um, so the and email. I'm glad you specified that. Yeah, it's not, unfortunately, you know we don't have those funds if Everyone's we did limited <laughs> everyone has limited funds if we did we would be spaying neutering everything to help the community um, but you can email lfpets so basically our initials and pets 209 at yahoo.com and what you need to do is you need to put the owner's name down what type of animal you have so it's breed its color its weight and its gender and then once a week, I email the vet that list, and then you're able to call and make your appointment. And that's to utilize our special rates. And awesome. they're, they're really, really great awesome. rates. <laughs> and then our local shelter does assist with span neuter. It is specific to pit bulls and chihuahuas just because we have such a huge problem in our community with overpopulation, especially in those two breeds. You can purchase a voucher at their pet pantry for $25 um, and have your animal spay or neutered, which is an awesome resource. Mm -hmm. um, and that's provided through Friends of the Animal Shelter, and it's great. It's wonderful. Uh, all of this helps. And so pe maybe people who use that resource for their pit bulls and their chihuahuas, and then that frees up more resources that you have that you can assist cats and other breeds. Exactly. All right, awesome. And does your, I know at times your organization has funded medical care, and I'm sure it's also on a very specific case by case. Yes. Do you want to talk about that as well? It really? It, it is very specific on a case by case basis. There have been occasions where we have become aware of animals who need some medical care, and we've been able to reach out to the owners and or go rescue the dog itself. Uh, and provide the medical care it needs. It's very specific because we aren't a rescue, we are a community-based organization. Um, so we don't want to take on more than we can handle. Of course. Um, but we also want to empower the community to be responsible for their pets too. So sometimes it's just about assisting them getting to the vet. Sometimes it's about telling them what they need to do to get to that vet. Um, but we do and have occasionally helped with medical. It's not very often because one hurt animal could really deplete the financial resources for spay and neutering and microchipping, and that's our fa that's our main focus. Well, and the shelter will also take in animals that are injured. You mm -hmm. can surrender an animal to the shelter um, almost every day of the week after um, noon. And the Animal Protection League, I didn't mention the organization earlier, is the one that runs the food pantry and provides the vouchers that are so needed in our community. Mm -hmm. um, we should touch briefly on spay and neuter and why that's so important. Um, it's important not only because of pet overpopulation issues, but 
the earlier you spay your female dog, you do help to prevent issues with tumors. You help to prevent fighting between dogs. You also make it less likely that your pet is going to escape yes. and may fight with other animals, get hit, get into toxins, other issues. So it, you really extend the longevity of your pet by spaying and neutering. Um, do either one of you have other advice that you want to give out to our listeners? Well, I think uh, chipping, I, I just can't say enough about microchipping because uh, the collar comes off. Mm -hmm. It gets chewed off. It gets pulled off. It gets yanked off. Tags The little off. tags, oh, whatever. A microchip does not. Yes, it may travel occasionally, but most of the time it does not, and it can be found. But that is the information. And not only having it done, but making sure it's current. Yes. You move, you change the address on the microchip. Yes. You, are, you are given information on how to do that. That is so important. Give them a voice. Or and if you rehome your pet, too, right. give them a voice. Give them a voice. I think that is probably the, the how this all began, is realizing that we have, they can't tell us where they live. They can't tell us who they belong to. But we can help them give them that voice and reunite as many pets as we can. We've done over 11,000 pets have been reunited with their owners, and, and it That's will be amazing. three years That's on awesome. the 31st That's of this amazing. month. That's, That's when amazing. we opened up the site was uh, July 31st. That's huge. So, And for those of you that don't know what a microchip is, um, it's a little object. It's about the size of a grain of rice. Mm -hmm. It's typically injected on the back between the shoulder blades, and it's given with a syringe just like a vaccine. You can do this with your pet awake. There's not a lot of pain involved. There are some animals that get anxious about it, and so some clients like to do this when their pet is sedated for a dental or to be spayed and neutered. But it can really be done any time for the majority of pets. Yes. We've actually done approximately 1,600 microchips wow. for the, since we've been doing it. So that's 1,600 animals who have a voice. Have a voice. That's and awesome. And hopefully get that. home. Awesome. And I can't emphasize enough what Linda expressed earlier about making sure the information is current. If you rehome your pet with someone else, if you move, if that information is not current, it's almost, it's just like they don't have a microchip. And so we want to give them a voice. We want to increase the chance that your pet returns to you. And we also use a free microchip database. So it's awesome. with our microchips, the database that we use is free for a li free for a lifetime. So you have login information, you can go in. You can also put alerts if your pet goes missing. Um, and they'll awesome. send out alerts. And uh, what company is that? Because we should give a shout out. I know they give you a, a prorated cost because you're purchasing so many chips. Who we actually use nano chips as the chips that we insert. And then we use the database foundanimals.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Awesome. And Dara, did you have any advice or other comments that you wanted to add? So as Linda kind of touched on earlier, we couldn't do this without the village. We have wonderful admins. Um, sometimes Linda and I are busy with the board stuff and doing other things, and there is no way that this site could be run without our admins. And it is 100% voluntary. Um, and Did you want to mention any of your yeah. board members or admins by name? Give them a shout out. Sure. Well, we have Stephanie Phillips, who is the co-founder of the page, along with Linda. Um, we have uh, Lori Moffey, we have Pinky Manor, mm -hmm. um, we have Debbie Newton, who's also a board member, Kel Kelly Elvis Flores, who is also a board member, um, we have Cheryl Zanigua, we have Kayla Kane, we have Nina Price, and I mm -hmm. think that's pretty much it that we have that volunteer, but we have a huge base of people who volunteer they give tips they give comfort um, they give sightings so even though our our admins are on there <laughs> they're on there often a lot more than we we can be we couldn't do it without them 
we and we couldn't do it without our members i'd like to interject one thing that this all began because on july the 5th the worst day for finding dogs everywhere so mm -hmm. scared from the fourth of july and all the fireworks and new year's day those are the two days that it it requires all of our resources to get those dogs reunited back with their homes they are so scared because the fences are uh not secure that they're not in the house that they're not in a uh, a peaceful transition sounds like a war zone out there it, it really does so because of that those two days it is the day why this started Stephanie and I met each other on the site trying to reunite dogs and from there it grew to And she this. made something amazing out of what's a tragedy for a lot of animals. However, awesome. it, it takes a village and we are fortunate to have wonderful admins and uh, uh, Stephanie works all the time uh, teaching school and still doing this every spare minute. Awesome. And let's just repeat the location, day and time of your dinner, your next fundraising event that's coming up, and how people can get tickets. It's going to be Saturday the 26th at 5 o'clock. They can purchase tickets uh, on PayPal. Uh, they can go on the website, which is www.lostandfoundpets209.com. Um, or and you can send a message to any one of the admins on the site. Uh, it's located at 105 South Ham Lane in Lodi at Zion Lutheran Church. Awesome. And it's going to be probably barbecue chicken and tri-tip and all the fixings. It sounds magnificent. <laughs> all right. And any final comments from either one of you? Anything that you'd like to add? Just please spay, neuter, and microchip. We can't do this without that. It makes a difference. Give them a voice. Give them a chance. Um, they're looking to go home, but they need your help. Awesome. And I love that. Give them a voice. And, and that's perfect. All right. So now as we are wrapping up, I just want to give a shout out to All Creatures Veterinary Emergency Clinic. And thank you for tuning in today. Hope you have a great day.